to form titanium nitride whereas niobium has high tendency to form niobium carbide. Now we move on to the bake hardening that is the BH steels. The bake hardening involves the static strain aging response. Basically the bake hardening I should rather say is a controlled static strain aging response and it involves the two phenomena. The first phenomena being that of dislocation pinning wherein the carbon and nitrogen act as the dislocation cores. Whereas the second phenomena is the precipitation hardening which involves or which requires I should rather say initial nucleation. In the bake hardening steels that is the BH steels after pre-straining and paint baking at 170 to 220 degrees centigrade there is bake hardening which increases the upper yield point in stress strain curve by about 30 to 50 megapascals. Now in these steels on increasing the amount of carbon in the flow limit diagram that is the FLD eventually the limiting strain curves on drawing and stretching curves decrease. Now we move on to the trip steels. Now trip as we already know stands for the transformation induced plasticity and trip comprises of two effects. In other words it is a combination of the two effects one occurring after the other and the first effect being the dispersion strengthening involving the growth of BCT martensitic islands and second one is the transformation plasticity which involves expansion of the BCT martensitic matrix thereby inducing plastic strains on parent austerite matrix. Trips is besides generally comprise of three phases namely ferrite, bainite and retained austenite. Retained austenite is present in almost 10 to 14 volume percent. Now trip steels continuing with them we find that retained austenite transforms to, to martensite during deformation. There are basically two varieties of trip steels. The first variety is the trip steel in which the matrix is predominantly austenitic and contains austenite stabilizers. Now second one is the trip assisted steels which contain more electromorphic ferrite about 50 to 60 volume percent, the carbide free bainite that is 20 to 30 volume percent and retained austenite about 10 to 20 volume percent with some martensite. Hence the name trip assisted is given to it. Besides they also contain 1 to 2 weight percent of silicon which prevents the carbide formation. Now we are going to discuss a bit regarding bainite. Now bainite as we already know comprises of ferrite and cementite but has a lathed morphology. It is generally obtained through moderate rate of cooling as for example os tempering of austenite when both iron and carbon have comparable diffusivities. Unlike austenite to martensitic transformation which is almost uh, time independent and thermal in nature this is quite time dependent and isothermal transformation involving both shear and reconstructive transformations. Reconstructive transformation since there is an incubation period at bainite nose in the TTT time temperature transformation diagrams. Uh, however, there is no space for bainite in the CCT diagram as bainite is not obtained during continuous cooling from austenite. Now, it is stable at temperatures between 350 to 540 degrees centigrade uh, such that upper bainite forms in between 500 to 540 degrees centigrade, acicular or granular bainite in between 400 to 500 degrees centigrade whereas lower bainite in between 350 to 400 degree centigrade. During bainitic transformation of austenite leads obtained have almost 0.7 to 8% of carbon in them so at higher temperatures or I should say at higher temperature ranges there is short range diffusion or the SRD of carbon from center to corners of lead and as found in an upper bainite. However, at lower temperature ranges diffusivity of carbon is so less. I am sorry, let us uh, move back to the previous slide. Uh, it is so less that uh, it remains concentrated in the center of the lats. So consequently, we have uh, Weidman Staten morphology of bainite. And so we can say from this particular statement that upper bainites have carbides present in between the lats 
and not concentrated within the rats whereas the lower vanite have the carbon content concentrated within the lats and not in between the lats. Now, uh, the trip steels, in trip steels the martensite is obtained from uh, austenite uh, following a very high rate of cooling which is also termed as quenching. Now, austenite cannot transform to martensite however unless the temperature of transformation goes below the martensitic start temperature um, at a given composition in the TTT or the CCT diagram. Now, austenite to martensitic transformation thus occurs at a very low temperature wherein diffusivities of both carbon and iron, and iron are very less. Uh, thus, the only mode of transformation is through shear. So now it is not always necessary for martensite to possess a body center tetragonal or the BCT structure. For instance, margining steels deriving their strengths from fine dispersions of microalloying elements like iron, titanium, nickel, etc. contain epsilon martensite having the HCP structure or the hexagonal close packed structure. It may also have a BCC or HCP structure. The explanation whether martensite will possess the BCT or BCC structure is given by the tetragonality that is a C by A ratio which if greater than or less than 1 the BCT structure will be favored. In that case the martensite will be found to have the high carbon content. Otherwise if the ratio is almost equal to 1 generally the ratio practically is say like uh, 1.01, 1.02 and so on the BCC structure will be favored. In that case, the martensite has low carbon content. As martensite is a non-equilibrium phase, as, which is obvious from the iron-carbon binary phase diagram, so according to the Bain distortion model, the higher the carbon content of, uh, of martensite, the more difficult it is to compress the C or the vertical axis and vice versa. As a result, a uh, high carbon martensite has a BCT structure whereas low carbon martensite has a BCC structure. During this transformation the C axis compresses by about 20% whereas horizontal axis or the A axis expands by about 12% resulting in a net increase in volume. In terms of morphology, high carbon martensite has lenticular morphology, whereas low carbon martensite has left morphology. On applying plastic strain to austenite matrix, austenite to martensitic transformation occurs. The MS temperature or the martensitic start temperature increases and the maximum value of which is martensitic deformation temperature or the MD, M sub XD, due to increase in strain energy. However, above MD temperature, the plastic strain on austenite matrix dominates over the plastic transformation. Now in the TTT diagram, the fraction of the FCC austenite transforming to BCT martensite increases with degree of undercooling below the, the martensitic start temperature. However, there is a point where 95% of austenite transforms to martensite and this that is the MF that is a martensitic finish temperature. Now in chip steels, they have a lower Borschinger effect than the dual phase steels that, uh, that will be discussed later of similar strength. However, the effect is nearly the same in both steels at elevated temperatures. Now, Boschinger effect states that the yield stress associated with compression following tension is much lesser than the flow stress associated with tension. According to this effect, the barriers to dislocation motion are anisotropic after pre straining. Although the zero of the flow limit diagram of both P, uh, sorry, of both trip steels and mild steels, which are the plain carbon steels, are uh, containing about 0 0.25 to 0 0.3 weight percent of carbon, and so they are uh, also called the 1025 to 1030 steels, are nearly the same. Uh, however, the trip steels tend to have higher flow limit on stretching side of FLD as compared to the mild mild steels of same strength. So dual phase steels, so the DP steels, uh, we can say like their composition first is as follows. The, they contain carbon less than 0.2%, manganese less than 1.5%, silicon less than 0.3%, chromium and molybdenum uh, almost equal to 0.5% when taken all together. Now chromium and molybdenum are generally added to the DP steels for hardenability, that is the ability to, ability to resist the perlite formation. At the same time, they have a primarily ferrite plus martensitic microstructure through a relatively simple thermomechanical processing and lean alloying. 
at the same time they are formed uh, mainly through intercritic and annealing have a continuous yielding and also they have a high ultimate tensile strength or the UTS and low initial yielding stress I'm sorry and low initial yielding strength it should be they provide high early stage strain hardening and a macroscopically homogeneous plastic flow which is enabled in absence of Luder's effects related to bands of plastic deformation in metals. Through manganese and carbon using the CEQ law of weldability, these steels are quite weldable in nature. Now through tempering, hardenability may be improved in DP steels as these steels initially have uh, almost about 0.28% of carbon and so high strength which has a sort of inverse relationship with bendability. Here the hall patch slope increases with increase in volume fraction of martensite. Initially when the hall patch behavior was determined a straight line was obtained in between the vickers hardness plotted along the y axis and grand and grain diameter plotted along the x axis. Also the same behavior was observed by plotting the yield strength along y axis and grain diameter along the x axis and it was estimated that 0.33 times of vickers hardness was almost equal to the yield strength of the material. Thus, yield strength increases with grain refinement which gives them the future motivation for producing the ultra-fine grain DP steels. For DP steels, the properties are controlled by the martensitic volume fraction VM, martensitic grain size SM, the martensite uh, carbon content that is CM, capital CM, martensite or ferrite morphology, ferrite grain size SF, ferrite texture, then density of transformation, induced geometrically necessary dislocations that is GNDs, micro and mesoscale segregation and chemical decoration state of the hetero interfaces. Overall the DP steels possess the excellent mechanical properties. Major disadvantage is that they have low yield strength to tensile strength ratio. Now we have been talking quite a lot regarding the flow element diagrams. However, in this particular presentation I have represented only the strain based flow element diagram which is comparatively much easier uh, than the stress based FLD. In case of the strain based FLD we have uh, uh, the uh, we have the, uh, the drawing side on the left hand side and the stretching side on the right and the stretching uh, part on the right hand side and we have the x axis um, on the right hand side of which we have tension and on the left hand side of which we have the compression and we represent the minor engineering strain noted by the symbols as small e1 along the x direction and the major engineering strain e2 represented along the y direction and the, these curves uh, the, 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 there is a linear curve on the drawing side and the, uh, and, um, and and a general curve on the right hand side which is not at all linear represents the transition between the safe the regions of safety and failure while drawing and stretching of a particular steel bar or a steel rod now we may represent the biaxial tension uh, 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 along the uh, along a line uh, on the strain on the strain waste fld it's because as because the bi for biaxial tension we have e2 is equal to e1 similarly for stretch forming we have e2 is equal to 0.5 e1 uh, so we can also represent it along the stretching side of the fld now for plane strain wherein e2 is equal to 0 we represent it we represent it generally along the y direction of the strain based fld at the same time in case of simple tension wherein the e2 is equal to minus of e1 that is minor engineering strain is equal to minus of half of uh, half time minus of half times the major the major engineering strain we observe that uh, the simple tension may be represented along the drawing side of the fld and at the same time the pure shear force wherein e2 is equal to minus of e1 may be may also be represented along the drawing side of the fld now if now we have the two parameters the first parameter being the beta now beta is equal to sigma 2 by sigma 1 wherein sigma 2 refers to the major engineering stress whereas sigma 1 refers to the minor engineering stress and at the same time we have the major engineering strain e2 and the minor engineering strain that is e1 so if we have a beta, beta is equal to sigma 2 by sigma 1 wherein if we have alpha, we have then alpha that is equal to minus, uh, that is equal to uh, e2 by e1. So for biaxial tension we have alpha is equal to plus 1. For stretch forming we have alpha is equal to half, plus half. Uh, then for plane forming, sorry for plane stretch, uh, for sorry for plane strain we have alpha is equal to 0. 
For simple tension, we have alpha is equal to minus of half or minus 0.5, and the, for pure shear force, we have alpha is equal to minus of 1. So now for a steel, whether it is any variety of steel, um, the FLD shows the limiting strain between the regions of drawing and failure, uh, between the regions of safety and failure while drawing and stretching the particular steel bar or the particular steel rod and so on. Now the strain based FLD is dependent on strain linear strain path whereas the stress based FLD is independent of strain paths. Now we move, we move on to the twip steels. So for the twip steels, we, are, we should first discuss its composition. 